streaming has started. The recording is a backup. Hi, good evening. Um, this is the Ethics and Disciplinary Committee meeting. We are going to start. I am Naomi Pemberton. I'm the chair of the Ethics and Disciplinary Committee. Today, we are going to go through the agenda now. I think you should formally state the reason the meeting started late. Oh, no. Um, you want me to say it on the call? I think we should for the people who may not know. Oh, okay. Um, so sorry for the delay in the meeting. We, there was a car accident outside of the office. So we were trying to help everyone get the help that they need, the ambulance, the fire department. So it was a little bit of a chaotic situation, but we are having it under control and they are getting the help that they need. So sorry about the delay. Um, first, I wanted to uh, first thing item on the agenda is a review of minutes. I don't have the minutes, so I'll have that for the next meeting. Um, this third item on the agenda is a social media presentation, so I'm going to start that. Just share my screen. Okay, so we wanted to talk about um, social media policy for community board members. This is just a guide. Um, if you want to review the social media policy written by the borough president's office, you can contact the staff. I have provided them a copy or you can email me and I will provide you a copy of the, of the uh, policy as well. So there, um, there's a New York City social media policy, which I have a link in my presentation. Is the borough, the Bronx Borough President's social media policy, and then there's the New York Conflict of Interest Law. Is everybody okay? Yeah. <laughs> they take everybody away. They're still working on them. So I wanted to just um, provide you some. some well, the community affairs because it looks like the Amazon driver doesn't have a license. He doesn't want to give it up to exchange information. One moment. One moment. <laughs> Okay. So, oops. okay. <laughs> I need to go back. Yeah, we, no, we don't want to just take it off. We won't give up anything. Okay. Thank. Yes. Get quite a few things. We have to Okay. Sorry about this, guys. Perhaps he doesn't want to give up his license because he's ununionized and is about to lose his job. I don't know. I'm in shock right now. I think I'm in like, I, I can't believe what's going on. It's crazy. Um, the, okay, so tips for social media. Social media dues. So you want to maintain respect in all interactions always uphold professional standards, follow ethical guidelines consistently, obtain your colleagues consent before posting their photos online, refrain from posting when in doubt. So I just wanted to provide some, because sometimes you don't know what is acceptable or not. So before you post something, just think, maybe think of these items before you, um, interact, understand that as a community board member, you are represent as we may, we may wear many hats. We still represent the organizations that we're a part of. We are, we're working voluntarily for, um, our district. So 
So we have to be mindful <clears throat> of what we put into um, put on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, the um, the the Twitter or from uh, the sign, formerly before. formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of. Um, you have to just make sure that you are being mindful of what you're posting. Okay. Things that you should consider. Avoid posting about public residents or other board members sharing their photos or revealing protected information. Refrain from sharing confidential information or internal communications. Do not post anything that can be construed as defamatory or libelous. Libelous. Do not post anything that can be construed as harassment or discrimination. Avoid posting content that may interfere with your ability, ability to work collegially with other board members. Refrain from posting content that may compromise your relationships in the community. Do not take photos or record videos or audio without permission. So these are things that you may just want to consider before you are posting onto your social media. As I said, we wear many hats and I understand that, but you still, you know, if something happens where you're putting something of harass, harassing, something that contains some harass, harassing type of language or discrimination or anything defamatory, it still represents the board. So you just want to be thoughtful. I totally support freedom of speech, but you have to be thoughtful about what you're putting out there because it's still as if I'm Naomi and I'm out and I'm out there and I say something that's crazy on the corner, they're going to say community board member Naomi said this. They're not going to say Naomi just said they, they might, but they're probably going to also tag on that I'm a community board member. So you just want to make sure that you're mindful of how you're posting and what you're posting. We lose sound. Yeah, I was just, I was just gonna ask. Yeah, I think they muted the office oh. by mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how that happened. I apologize. Move the mouse off the mute button just so you don't hit it by accident. Because mm. right now it's yeah, just it's the pointers on the mute button. Up 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 there. Oh, okay. The so on. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, the importance of cautious posting. Protect the community board's reputation. So when you're thinking about posting, just think about that. We want to make sure that our reputation is protected and that we are being, we are living with integrity and we're, you know, not causing any um, defamation of our, you know, of our community board. So legal protection from defamation or being liable. We want to make sure that we are not brought up on any legal or any liable charges. So we want to, that's why you want to just make sure that you um, you have some consideration about what you're uh, putting on your social media. Uh, no accusations of harassment or discrimination. You want to, we want to create a culture of respect, right? It, one of a, one of a, one another. So if we are posting things about each other or being disrespectful to each other, it doesn't help in terms of creating a culture of respect within the, the board itself. It can cause conflicts, which is what we don't want because we're all here to work for the community. Um, subjected to freedom of information laws. So 
just know anything that you post you um, in regards and relations to the community board can be foiled. So you want to make sure that you are um, providing respectable information or respectable posts um, in terms of when you're using your social media. Okay. Uh, so I. Thank you, Jordan, if you have any questions, but I just wanted to read to you um, the borough president's social media uh, policy. I I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read something I highlighted in terms of what they expect from social media, using social media tools. So social media tools are creative and interactive forms of online communication. They provide a platform for New York City to develop stronger and more successful relationships with residents, visitors, and other customers. Social media provides agencies the ability to promote agency programs and initiatives by engaging customers, provide customers with an additional way to interact with the city, complement and in and integrate traditional media for wider message distribution, engage in national and regional discussions on relevant city issues, act as a service provider, and connect New Yorkers with programs for information. Okay, so social media is not, it, this is the goal of what the city is looking for the social media to do when you're posting and when you're, when you're interacting with the community. So you just want to maybe keep those things in mind, as well as some of the tips that I provided um, in the presentation. Um, are there any questions? I don't have a question, but I do want to say thank you. This is very informative. Oh, and just okay. like you said, we, we wear many hats, but just like we have a job, if we do something that's defamatory or just something that goes against whatever the the guidance is from your job this is like a job we don't exactly. get paid for it we're mm -hmm. volunteers but no matter what whatever you do will reflect on every hat you wear exactly. you don't get to pick and choose really which hat you're working under like i can work under Allerton merchants but i know that whatever i do there may be an issue exactly. um, for my job right so i have to be careful you know right. so just like everybody if you have any doubts like naomi put in the presentation if you're looking at something you're about to post and you doubting whether or not you should do it err on the side of caution don't mm -hmm. just don't post it right if you have any concerns about it but thank you again this, no this was great oh good thank you i appreciate that oh cynthia so <clears throat> just another um, cautionary tale is to remember that when we're on social media, um, you might delete something that you posted, you know, later on down the road. But once it's up there, it's very likely that it will be there forever and can resurface when you least expect it. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, um, we're a community board. We're a family, we live, we live in the same neighborhood, we live in the same um, streets, avenues. <laughs> we should try to make sure that um, we're being respectful of one another and respectful to our community as well. If you, you know, even if you're disrespecting someone in the community, that's not good as well. So I just wanted to, you know, have this presentation tonight so that just to give you some guidelines and just so that you have, um, some you know some some tips on how to think about posting in the future miguel that was an act i'm sorry i'm sorry he's muted oh um, miguel you're muted i think he said it was an Oh, it was an accident. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, great. 
Okay, so we can move on to the gallery session. I'm going to do two minutes. Just let me get my timer. <laughs> okay. Anyone sign up for the gallery session? Jeremy, does anyone sign up for gallery? Okay. I'm sorry. Jeremy. Thank you. All right, guys. Did four nine show up? They yeah. finally showed up now. Is there anybody online who wants to speak? Uh, my hand is up on purpose this time. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, Miguel Dyer, former member. Um, I just, I, I just want everybody to know, like, as far as the like the social media thing goes, it seems as if there is a partisan divide as far as that goes, and. I am not here to, you know, to to pit one side against the other or whatever, but it does seem to me that um, certain people on one side of the aisle get away with a lot, a lot, and certain people on the other side of the aisle don't even say anything, but when they do, it's like, you know, it's it's the end of the world. Um, and I just think that it would be it would be prudent for us as a board or for you as a board um, to uh, to make sure that, you know, that that kind of that kind of. Oversight um, works both ways. Thank you. OK, thank you. I think Diana has her hand up. Diana, Diana, would you like to yes. talk? Yes, thank you for tackling this very difficult subject. Um, I feel that on social media and Facebook in particular, and community Facebook groups, that I've been the target of maybe what you would call harassment, even by board members, even by members board members who are on the ethics committee who because they disagree with my political views have posted that I'm destroying the community Ooh. I mean it seems to get most heated around politics discussions of politics there are board members who call out a political an entire political party for being disgusting and it's just, it's very, you know, they're community members discussing issues that are before the board that have told me I'm a toddler and have said, oh, you're a lonely person. Nobody sits with you at meetings. I mean, it's really a little crazy what goes mm -hmm. on. And yes, freedom of speech, but. I just don't know. I mean, none of these individual instances seem worth bringing an ethics complaint over, but the cumulative effect is really nasty. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that's why I'm having this discussion because um, I've noticed that it's been a, a sore issue um, within the community board as well as with the community, and I really want to make sure that we um, address address the issue, and also I want people to understand that it affects people. It, it's hurt. Sometimes it's hurtful, and yes, it is hurtful. Mindful, it is, it's hurtful. Yeah, we have to yeah. be mindful of that. Yeah, and the the whole um, the whole point of this board is to help the community, not to hurt. Right. So we have to we have to think of um, to think of that when you're posting. That's right, and people fine. know that I am one of the board members of the Bronx Park East Community Association and that I run 
the BPECA Facebook group and there are people not on the board, I don't think, but who tend to post things disparaging BPECA and right. disparaging our neighborhood mm -hmm. because they disagree with me. I mean, it's really too much. I mean, right. if I have done things to provoke this, I would want to know. I try not to, but also I have a, a difficulty when people post strongly held opinions that contain misinformation. I think that's very hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. Is the best thing to just ignore them? And then that gives an impression that a whole community feels a certain way when they don't. Right. I mean, it's also, you know, what I know from working with Bipeka is that it's a small subset of people who are on Facebook and active on Facebook, and they don't necessarily, the people who post a lot on Facebook don't necessarily represent the wider community, but they are very vocal. Right. No, that's a good point. And it is just, it's, the whole thing is very difficult. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think um, hopefully um, as we work on some of the issues that the community board is having, we will try to, you know, be more mindful in the future. I will definitely, you know, be, I'll be sending this document to um, Jeremy so he can send it to anyone who wants to review it. And hopefully we can move forward. I mean, that said, there are some groups where people gather just to argue with each other. You know, that's the reason for the group and mm -hmm. people argue back and forth very strenuously, but people know that that's what that group is for. And that's not the way in the general community groups to act. I don't know. But I think everything trickles down, right? So we just should be respectful and, it, you know, we should just be respectful. Like, like I said, I think everyone has their right to the freedom of their speech, but you could be respectful about your opinion. You know, you don't have to attack other people within social media. Right. No one's going to yeah. have the same opinion. Exactly. We just have to be respectful of everybody's opinion. You don't agree, agree to disagree. Yeah. There's no reason to attack each other over it. Thanks, Diana. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Hi, Hi it's Kay. I Kay. can't raise my hand on this phone. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sure, Kay, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to, this is like off topic. A week ago, you guys had the disciplinary hearing. I really wanted to attend. And for some reason, I had an issue with WebEx. And I researched it, and it turned out there was some kind of network issue why I didn't have audio. And I've been asking people for like the last week and have not gotten a straight answer. What exactly happened at that meeting? And is Bernadette still with you guys or did you decide to um, like not let her stay on the board anymore? That's the investigative committee and that it ha a decision hasn't been made. We're still investigating it and it's on YouTube. You can watch the video on YouTube to see exactly what went on. I know I've been trying to get like the more recent meetings on YouTube and I have, <clears throat> I haven't been able to, but I am stopping by the live. live. I'm sorry. Look, look under the live tab when you go to community, uh, Bronx community board 11, it's going to be under live. It's not going to be on the videos. So if you look under live, all the live videos that were taken, they should be listed under there. Oh, okay. So I guess I was pressing the wrong things, which is normal for me. It's confusing. It, it happens to everyone, so don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can drop um, the YouTube channel in the in the chat. I just dropped the investigative uh, oh. YouTube on the chat. On the chat. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank What's you, Jeremy. That? That's right. Oh, oh, thanks, Rich. Sorry. Welcome. Uh, AJ Ramos raised his hand. AJ, you Hello, want to speak? You, can you hear me? Yes, 
Yes, hello, CB11. My name is Armando Aja Ramos. Uh, great presentation. I would just like to add that the board should be apolitical and unbiased, and certain members by the digital footprint social media leaves clearly are not unbiased and are super partisan on certain issues. Hence, I believe a lot of the misinformation and miscommunication and delays coming out of CB11. I just wanted to also add that uh, there is no right uh, no right to privacy in public, no expectation of privacy in public. You're allowed to film and record anything you can under the First Amendment. As a member of the public, we have a right to criticize our public servants who serve us and shouldn't be serving themselves or their affiliated associations they are with. And as such, your social media postings should be super, super clean and per bylaws and guidelines by the Conflict of Interest Board, by the Borough President, by the City of New York, because you guys are not representing yourselves. You're representing the city. And from what I've seen, you've become a laughing stock. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, AJ. Is the guy who made a parody? No. Oh, no. Um, um, I, I do want to address one thing um, that AJ said about video and, and, and photos. I do understand what you're saying, and I'm not saying that you're wrong, but what I'm trying to do is um, create a, a community of respect. So if you're video, if I'm videoing Tiz, I'm gonna say, Tits, can I video you? And I'm gonna post you online. Would you respect me more? Absolutely. Than me just Absolutely. posting it? <laughs> That's good. They only just posted it. Absolutely, yes. Hey, I'm gonna go to the house. You know, I'm just as board members, you should. As board members, you should ask for permission. But as members of the public, we do not. We have rights in America. Thank you so much. No, I understand. So do we. Just for yeah, everybody just has for rights. Board members doesn't mean that we're we no longer public people, and people of the public. We have rights too. So. If somebody's videotaping us, and I'm not talking about meetings, but just in general, if somebody's videotaping us and we ask them not to, we should be afforded that respect if we ask not to be, just like we would do it to anyone else. Just because we're board members outside of a, com a community board meeting doesn't mean that we don't get any less respect than any other person. Ma'am, as respectfully, as public servants, you guys lose that right, and as members of the public, we, we never lose our rights. Thank you so much. Any right. True. That's not fair to say we, we don't lose any rights. We have our same rights, but we wear this hat. I think that's the end of the discussion, don't okay. if you agree. Yeah. Um, can I chime in just quickly? Sure. I haven't spoken yet, Miguel. Wait, I, I I'm aware of that, but I you can't see everybody. I think you should change the layout so wait, we can let see everybody. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, grid. Bob. Grid. Okay. Bob, can I, I continue? I can see your hand, Bob. Okay, Thank you. Good. Rather go before me. Is oh. that what? You've already <laughs> spoken, Miguel. Can I speak? Uh, I only Thank spoke you. for like 35 okay. seconds, but go ahead. I have a question about item six and item seven. Because I right see. now you're in a gallery session, then it says motions, and then you have item six, failed motion pri about privacy standards, and then item seven is unofficial social media pages. Now, are uh -huh. there going to be any motions proposed about those two items? Um, no, not at this, probably not at this time. Just probably going to just have a discussion about the failed motion, Bob, and then the unofficial social media pages. That's looking that I brought to the full board already. There's a chair out there too. Yeah. Thank you. All right, because no, no, I just wanted to know if you want to make any motions there. And, oh, okay. And I just want to do say that at a meeting, film can be taken of you because uh, we have one member of the public who does that too often. He takes pictures at your meetings. Uh, I know oh, I have yeah. done it in the past two of board meetings since I'm a member of the media, uh, right. but non-members of the media have done it also. No, uh, no, we weren't talking about the committee meetings. We understand that the committee meetings are public and right. people take videos and stuff. We're talking about when we're not in the committee meeting, when we're just... Oh, no, yes, you're 100% right on that. You deserve your privacy on that. That's 100% exactly. right. And, I'm, and like I said, I want to create a culture where we respect each other, right? So if you're videotaping, if you're doing certain things, you, there's nothing wrong with just saying, hi, you know, I'm taking pictures, I'm videotaping today, whatever. But it's a, it's a point of respect. That's where, that's where my statement is coming from. If you, and as far as the uh, chat goes, I'm not a member of the board right now. Okay, so I'm a member of the media. It was something for media, but going back to uh, also what you really missed on some things though is that you mentioned over it fast, but 
when board members are on the board, they sometimes get information relating to issues that are going to happen on the board or in the community. And they're not supposed to post anything. Uh, like, for instance, I was told when I got onto board eight, whatever I get inside the board, I have to wait until it's public and then I can write about it. And there was an issue about something, uh, a revamping of Broadway by Van Cortland Park, which one of my competitors received from the board office. I had the inside information and couldn't write about it, but they could. So that's what you have to worry. Also be conscious of that. You cannot spread anything that's confidential information to the board. Also. Okay. Okay. Right. I, did, I did mention the confidentiality. But right. You just, I, yeah. But I'm glad you gave that example. No, that okay. was a good example. Thank you. Yeah. Have a mm -hmm. good night. Good night. Thanks, Bob. May I, I thought. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the the point is, as somebody that has been actually like hounded down outside of my home, um, and like physically assaulted, um, like being a community board member does not require you to give up any semblance of your safety period and i think that's that's important to know and secondly i know that uh mr amado spoke earlier um it is when you when you think about the uh you know the the social media policies and whatever like it is never okay to me um to call somebody a c word it just isn't thank you um and i don't regardless of how strongly you disagree with people there is there is there is a place for discourse but that's not discourse thank you thank you if i may say you know, yeah, go ahead. one thing i've always stood strongly for is if a board member for any reason feels unsafe by the actions of anyone they should make a report to the yes. police don't hesitate I did three times yes. yeah well i'm just saying for all board just for members, everybody she's if, if you feel unsafe by actions by anybody then you should report that to the police. We we deserve and we Three should take absolutely to help. nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. Uh, and I'm sorry, you know, that but I think I do agree and that I think that I I've, I've, I've made that very clear in several uh, in several meetings. Mm -hmm. Um so it, I don't I don't think that I need to belabor the subject. Thank you. Maybe we can bring that up at public safety. Um, if the officer, the community officer visits, we should ask right him about that. Susan, right behind you. Because we should feel safe. We're serving the community. We should feel safe. We should not feel the way, you know, in, in, in what you described. Um, Ephraim? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I want to, I agree with Miguel. Uh, I agree with Robert. I agree with the point that um, Armando made. There has to be tact when when you're filming in a public venue. I'm a, I'm a videographer. I've been doing it for years. I mostly filmed um, political uh, press conferences and then um, you know, music events, mostly Latin music. The thing is, never have I ever gone to somebody's house because they disagree. That is, that is more than petty. It's it's actually dangerous because it can it can lead to a lot of problems that I don't think that we should be dealing with, uh, whether we're on a board or not. Um, I work for a hospital. Um, I, I'm, I'm a member of a union. No, I would never want anybody to uh, come and film me because the union takes a stand or something. That's scary. So I, I think that going forward, 
um, it would be, I think, very helpful if people who are like Bob Presley and the media can explain, you know, public is public. I really don't think that anybody should be going to somebody's house to harass them. And, and Miguel, I feel very bad that you had to endure that because I'm going to tell you something. When, when I go home, I don't want anybody coming to my house. Uh, and as much as I film and I put up a lot of stuff, I don't go. And I have disagreements with people that speak at the board and in the communities, but I would never. And so I, I really think that if somebody's doing that and then they go to meetings and then they, they're harassing, no, that does have to be addressed. And, yes, I believe it is a public safety issue. And, and Madam Chair, I don't think that anybody – if they have that much energy, they should just do it for their cause. But it should not be at the home of, of anyone. Uh, yes. That's scary. Uh, and it's not just the person that you're disagreeing with, but what if they have family members that are there? Yes. They could be in danger. So that's what, that's all I want to say. And Madam Chair, thank you very much. And good night to everyone. Thank you. I Thank you. I appreciate that, those comments. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, I have something. To oh, okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, so, you know, it's really interesting to hear some of the comments coming from some of the people who are not on the board, um, because I I remember very clearly an incident not too long ago where board members' names were being, um, you know, shared and and you know, um, also you know suggestions of you know uh, getting more information about their you know uh, I don't know. What else? Private information. And I just want to say something. Um, you know, I wear many hats too. I don't talk about what those hats are. And so one of the things that I have to say is that I open myself up to that, right? Because I I willingly um, go into those spaces and say, I'm okay with that, right? Um, but new board members, um, from the time that they, you know, got onto the board, um, names were shared, you know, people were asking for more information. And, you know, what, what's the purpose of that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it felt like, you know, doxing almost, like you're trying to intimidate members, you're trying, you know, I don't know what the purpose is, but that was sort of the take that I got from that, and I didn't appreciate it. And especially coming from somebody who wants to be on the board or who wants to be more inclusive in the things that we're doing, I think that's terrible behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Good night. I wanted to say that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Mm -hmm. I want to say that Great. board members are volunteers. And I want to say that at, we are, there's, there's definitely sometimes double and triple standards. We're held to a higher standard and we're expected to do this and do this and do this. But at the same time, in many instances, we're treated like less than dirt. Mm -hmm. We're bullied, we're threatened, mm -hmm. we're harassed. Respect goes out the window. Okay. So, mm -hmm. And it's sometimes, sadly, inside the board as well as outside of the board. Right. But at some point, we have to have more integrity. Yes. Actually, act in an ethical manner across mm -hmm. the board. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be different rules for different people. Agree. You know. Mm -hmm. I believe that you give and you get respect, and I think that should be happening all the time, mm -hmm. not just selectively. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have to get to a point inside of this board where we create a positive, productive, respectful environment where we can do what we're here to do, which is serve the community and not do it at our personal expense. Because it is, it has a very, serious detriment when you're constantly dealing 
with that amount of negativity and toxicity. Right. And I would really like to see that change and that we can just move forward in that very positive direction. I agree. I think I think we've made a lot of improvements. I have to I've seen the meetings go, you know, if anybody disagrees with me, but I've seen the meetings go much better where people are respecting each other. And I think that sometimes we just need the education and we need or we need to just sit down and talk about what what type of board we want to be, right? We want to be respectful to each other. We want, you know, we we want um people to respect us via this uh, social media, we want respect when you're talking, when we're meeting, when we're working for the community. And I think we also have to be um, the, the where, where we're the examples for the community, not doing, you know, not acting in a way that is not respectful. So that we all have to kind of, that's why I'm saying that Yes, you wear many hats and one of your hats is a community board member, then you have to understand that that comes with certain um, obligations. And that is to, you know, to be an example to everyone. And so you have to think about that when you're writing in your social media, when you're, you know, if you're disrespecting someone, those are things you need to really think about because you, you are the example, whether you believe it or not, people are looking to us for, to help to to make sure that their voice is heard. So, and the way you do that is to formulate the culture of respect. Just be human people. So, thank you, Miguel. Any other, any other thoughts? Okay. So we're going to move on from the gallery session. Thank you very much for this very um, this conversation. I'm so glad we did have this conversation because um, I know that social media was was one of the points that I saw through the year last year in terms of um, discussion. So I'm glad we were able to have the discussion. Like I said again, if you need the um, borough president's social media policy, I'll I, the staff here can provide that to you because I did share it with them. You did send it. Yeah, we mm -hmm. did send it. Oh, okay, wonderful. I left it on my desk. Today. Oh, okay, wonderful. And if you want a copy of this presentation, so you can have some thoughts of, you know, some tips, some thoughts on how to post on your social media or interact with the community, I will also. I also did share this with Jeremy as well, so the staff can have that as well. I'll share it again with the staff, so they can sh they can send it to you if you're looking to um, for for reference. Okay. The next item, um, I don't think is there any motions that need to be made. Okay, oh, great. Right. No. Um, do you want to discuss the failed motion at January full board community board 11? I don't know. If, do we need to do that or because. From what I understood, uh, Malcolm was concerned because he didn't see your. Your link, right? And I did send it out. So I, you know, I think I might have seen it. It's been forwarded to the full the whole board, right? I don't know if it was forwarded to the whole board. I mean, Maybe I just saw it because I'm part of the community. Yeah, because I yeah. sent it out yeah. to the community. Um, I know I, I know Rich had asked the question. I sent it to Rich. So maybe send um, it to Jeremy again and ask him again. to distribute it to the whole, the whole board. And okay. we can vote on it. With a message to please look at it because we're going to revisit the motion again at the next full board. Okay. We'll do that tonight. So, okay. And the unofficial social media pages as a new business. Um, I presented that at the full board, so I think people wanted to think about it. Um, I I have a question on sure. that. Since it's an unofficial social media page, the community board doesn't have any real governance over that because no. it's now an unofficial page. The official page, I can see how we have governance over. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little confused about what we can actually do when it's an unofficial page. Well, the problem is, is that it's it's um, ran by a, a board member, like the administrator is a board member. So that's what we need to figure out. Like, are we just going to switch it out? Should we start from the beginning? Because I, like I said, there's been a lot of contention with that unofficial I think social that, media page. I think the issue should be whether or not as a board we want 
people who are board members administering an unofficial. Right, exactly. So and that's that a, that's we the can't really tell them to shut it down. We can't right. really tell I mean, them I, what to do on it. Right. But the only thing that I can see, and this is just my opinion, yeah. is whether or not we want to tell our board members that they shouldn't be administering on a social media page that, that is an unofficial right. social media page. I mean, there could be other. That's just there could yeah. be other resolutions to that too. Yeah. And um, just just as, just to say, we can't tell people to do, but we have we have to kind of provide the guidance right. of what what needs to happen. Because my thing is is that I'm just telling I'm just coming from a position where I'm hearing. This is causing problems. This is mm -hmm. this is making me upset. This is making you know I'm, I feel hurt. I'm upset. I don't like what people, this one said. This so that's why I was saying maybe we can have someone from the community restart the page or continue. But well, we, we need have to remove one, though, some of the things one. that was said. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we we have an official one, which is great, and we can start pushing things towards that. But we, the problem is that the administrators or the administrator is community. I think there's member. multiple administrators on that. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, that's where the issue lies. Some of them are not. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Say, yeah, it's like two that are don't live in, in our, you know, in our district. In our district. I'm sorry, somebody was speaking. I, I wanted yeah. to make a suggestion. Huh? Naomi, I'm sorry. I, hi, it's Cindy. Um, I said, so, so I think maybe, um, I don't know how, um, how feasible it is, but I think perhaps we can have the ethics committee and the social media committee have a joint meeting to kind of discuss those nuances, particularly the issue of, you know, board members, such as myself, um, mm -hmm. being admins on the unofficial page and, and. You know what? What kind of um, middle ground we can reach on that? Uh, just throwing that out there, mate. Because the social media committee hasn't met in in about a year. Oh, okay. Let me. Um, okay. Some people have some questions. Go ahead, Jeanette. I just I have a clarification in the comment. Okay. Was this an ever an official page that then became yes. an unofficial? Yes. Page? Yes. It was an unofficial page that then became an official page and has now become an unofficial, unofficial page. page. Again. So just in in that just in that sentence that puts a, a lot of that a lot of confusion and puts it into a gray area. It wasn't official. Now it's official. Then it's not official again. Well, maybe next week it'll be official. Well, it was voted on by the board to make it the unofficial page. Okay. So, but the board can vote on it. But the people who see it and read it. In in their minds, are they saying, well, it was official, but now it's not official. So this isn't actually the community board speaking. This is just a, another social media. There are so many questions because of the nature of it and because board members administer it. That at the end of the day, how many people are going to perceive it has to be taken into consideration. And I do think that as a community board, we have to look at that and we have to address it. I agree. Question. Um, I think I, be I believe I remember someone saying that Joanne was the founder. Yes. Right? Yes, yes Joanne. I page. think that the easiest thing that we could do to resolve the issue is just change the name. Mm. Remove the CB11 from it, call it whatever you want that, you know, I mean, I don't think it's going to change how many followers you have on that page as it is now, but no one can say that there isn't at least out of those 3,000 or I don't know how many people follow that page, that there are in several hundred that don't understand that that meeting happened and that is not an official page anymore. Mm -hmm. People will get confused. They don't follow our you know meetings. They don't know what's going on. They see things posted citizens to CB11. They might think it's an official standing or position of the community board and that is where you know, things yeah. get muddy. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. If people on on you know the the board want to continue to, you know, be admins, I think that's fine. I think the other the easiest thing to do is say, okay, this is, you know, let's change it. Just change it. So people know this is yeah. nothing to do with C V eleven. This isn't an official page. This isn't, you know I think right. another suggestion would be to pin a post at the top 
stating this is not an official right, CBO page and, page and, or link to and I think Joanne needs to be included in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It is her page. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, um, that's something you could do. And yeah, so there, links there, there, there is already an announcement on the on the unofficial page saying that it is not an official page. Does right. it link the official page for people to be able to easily navigate to it? I don't think that you can. I'd have to look again. Yeah, but the issue is or when I spoke to um, the Brooksboro president's office is that the community board members are the founders and the you know administrator of this page. It's okay if the community takes it off, but us being involved is where we have to try to figure that out. We just talking about how we represent the board, right. we represent the community and stuff, and if. The two that are, the two board members that are on it, they represent just like we are. And if they're on that unofficial page, people will see them differently too. I don't know. I'm just saying that they see them there, and I don't even look at that page. So, but whatever may be going on there, we'll be connected to those two board mm -hmm. members, right? And we just went through the conversation that we're seeing in a higher standard, right? right. So. I think just having maybe those two and maybe changing the name so people still don't get confused mm -hmm. that it's not the community board. Yeah. Christine? I, I mean, because, you know, look, everybody has the freedom to express themselves, right? Um, and have opinions of their own. If you're doing that on your own page where it doesn't say, where is it connected anywhere to the work that we're doing here where we're supposed to be neutral, then that's a different thing. Right, I'm not going on your page looking for things, right? Mostly, you know, uh, most normal people are not looking, you know, at people's private pages to see what their positions are on those things, right? But on this page, it's different. When you when you share that personal opinion on that page, I can see where people might conflate, you know, mm -hmm. that this is an official position, right? So that's yeah. I think maybe we need to talk to the social media committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have asked them to please have a meeting where this can be discussed because Joanne is part of the committee. Mm -hmm. And it's since it's her page, we need to get you know her input as well. Mm -hmm. So having a social media committee yeah. meeting, I think is imperative at this point. Yeah, I agree. Um sit Sin, are you the um, chair of the social media committee and Malcolm? No, that's Joanne is the chair and I believe Debbie is the co-chair, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, maybe we can do it at our next. Which is the problem? Maybe we'll. I'm co-chair. Maybe um, Debbie's on. Oh. Maybe um, at the leadership meeting, okay. we, can, we can broach the subject of asking the social media committee to uh, to put a meeting on yeah. schedule. Okay, sounds like a plan. Any other um, questions, concerns? Diana, do you still have your hand? Uh, yes, I do. I wasn't sure if you were taking gallery comments as well. Um, I think one of the big problems is the name of the group. It's Citizens of Bronx Community Board 11. And really what everyone's saying is that it's not the board, it's the district. That it's a group for. Diana, so, nobody's really saying that except for don't you. Don't interrupt, please don't interrupt me. All right, please, Diana. Diana. So we had a, when the name was Diana, changed. Wait, wait, Diana, we're gonna reset. We're gonna okay. reset. And when the name was changed, it became citizens of. There's also a friends of group. I think citizens Diana was chosen because it encompasses everyone, not just the people. No, that but wait, wait, Diana, Please let, let me, me finish. Please just let me finish what I'm saying. People questioned why it was citizens and not residents, because you don't have to be a citizen to be a member of the community board. You only need to be a resident. And the name was going to be changed, but it was too soon after it had been changed to Citizens of Bronx Community Board 11. So I think I would request again, and the board voted on it and said, yes, change it to resident, but it couldn't be changed because it was too soon from the last change. So I would like to raise that again. I'd also like to observe that the 
admins are very inconsistent. Like when I submit posts, some people will post my post, accept my posts immediately, and other people, it seems, won't post my posts. And I think that that's a problem. Inconsistent moderation. There was there was no vote as to what it was being named. That, that, so that is incorrect. I that just, is absolutely I, I, incorrect. That's number one. Number two, residents is only people living there. Citizens is anybody working and living there. Okay, so I, I don't want us to get sidetracked by but by, by this. I want I want us I'm sorry. She knows what I'm gonna talk about. She knows what I'm gonna talk about. I want us I want us to understand that we are going to review this. We're gonna make the recommendation to have a meeting with the social media um committee. Thank you. <laughs> social media committee and the and the ethics committee are going to meet. So that we can discuss this and discuss the where what we're going to be doing going forward. I already I have already expressed during this meeting and to leadership and to full board about the unofficial page and speaking to the borough president's office. So we're going to move forward for the six shifts. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say one thing again, mm -hmm. just so it's out there, an unofficial page does we the board has no authority on that page. Other than what we decide our members can and cannot do that it became unofficial. That means that basically our hands are wiped clean of what happens on that page, except when it comes to our board members. I, I don't see how we can tell somebody what to do on a page that is no longer under the regulation of the community board. So I think they're using the name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see what you're saying. But then we need to have those two board members that are on that page to remove themselves because if they're part of that and other people are going in there talking about any of us and no one addresses that, then it's not right that they're part of it. more than two board members yeah. that are admins. And that's it's something that as a community board that together we have a conversation we'll have to about. Right. Then we right. we don't, like you said, we don't have control over that page. Totally understood. We've given suggestions and we need to talk to Joanne, right? But the board members, if we're going to continue and I know we have no control over it, then those board members, how many, whatever, should remove themselves. Because if we do have that type of stuff mm -hmm. put on there about one of us or even one of them, mm -hmm. it's not right. And, right. and we should just. And that's why. That. I that's why the yeah. social media definitely to meet. So this is something that we can address there and hopefully come to a resolution that we could bring to the full board. Yeah, I just want to, I just want to give an example, show sure. an example. I'm sorry. I'm a teacher, mm -hmm. but the way we're having conversation here is awesome. And I just want to say thank you because some other people don't know how to have these conversations. And this is where we need to learn to be able to have disagreements mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and still have a conversation exactly. and not interrupt each other when we're trying to speak because like we all said we have freedom of speech and we're able to talk exactly. so let me finish and then you right. go next so we shouldn't interrupt each other and we shouldn't be rude to each other exactly agree thank you agree i always agree with that <laughs> we have uh, three hands yeah we have three hands up okay so Rick. Well, AJ was first. Oh. AJ? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, just for some context, uh, the board had the official page. I had filed a FOIL with Jeremy. I took over a year to put it all together. I posted a video, which was then deleted and blocked while this was still an official page. I had questioned why my First Amendment rights were violated because uh, social uh, uh, political figures are not allowed to block on social AJ, you got that. So the one second I was uncertified. The board had control over the page, and then out of nowhere it was uncertified. Upon uncertification, it should have been deleted. City resources went onto this page. It shouldn't have been turned over to a personal page at all. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, AJ. Um, Rich, hey guys, a couple of things. I totally welcome that uh, shared meeting with the social media. Subcommittee one, 
too. If we really have a problem with a page on Facebook, we can report it and get it taken down. I've been on part of the other boards. We've done that. It's totally possible. That's another vehicle. If folks really have a problem, you can report it and get it taken down. Third, for Armando, that SCOTUS decisions, uh, the Supreme Court that happened today. So I, anything that happened before today wouldn't have been applicable. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Okay, Robert. There are five board members who are admits. Uh, you have Cynthia, you have Malcolm, you have, Di uh, what's the name, Joanne and Debbie, as well as Bernadette, who is now an admit. She's uh, listed on the page itself as an admit, as well as, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Annie Boiler and Stephanie Raptus. Okay. Uh, if it's an unofficial board page, the board has no control over it. And the board can't say anything about it. They can't change the name. They can only suggest things to the admits, but the admits are board members. So that's where the conflict of interest comes in. Exactly, Bob. Thank you for explaining that. Exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. Thank exactly. you. Conflict of interest of the board member. Is that you? Okay. Um, take Rich, are, did you have something else to say, Rich? I see your hand still up. Thank you. Yeah. Done. Oh, okay. So this, so all, all I can see is that this is a very hot topic. <laughs> and from that, we need to have further discussion. So we will do that. We will coordinate those efforts to have further discussion about the unofficial page. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> So, Jeremy, we are, um, oh, I'm sorry, making the motion to end the meeting. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay. So, Jeremy, we are ending at 811. You can hear me. That's okay. We'll reach out to him. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Hit stop video. Good night. Good night, everybody. And before you hit, I'm uh, Thank you, because I put it on. Yeah. There. So hit the arrow. Oh, wait, no, the X, sorry. The X. I'm trying, this thing is like. <laughs> and now, and click save. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh.